In 1913, Tagore became the first Asian to win the Nobel Prize. Some 94 years later, another Indian became the first Asian to win the Abel Prize, which is known as the Nobel Prize for Math. That was why meeting with Professor Srinivasa Varadhan was as honorable as meeting Tagore. He is the world's best probability theorist, and for the last 60 years, he has played a big role in making the NYU Quran Institute the number one applied math institute. Namaste, Professor Varadhan. It's an honor to meet you. Very well. Uh, your first name, uh, Srinivasa, is uh, actually very similar to the first name of another great Indian mathematician, uh, Srinivasa and Ramanujan. So. It was a very common name. I know personally at least 20 different things I said. You know, uh, know what Srinivasa means? I don't. What does it mean? Sri is for Lakshmi, goddess, the goddess. Srinivas means the resident, residing place. The myth is Vishnu. As Lakshmi stands out all over this. So that's what Srinivas means. You were born in Kolkata, right? No, I was born in Chennai. Oh, sorry. Uh, you grew up in Kolkata, right? I grew up around Chennai. I went ah. to Kolkata for my PhD. Well, uh, can you tell me about your uh, graduate education? How did your college experience go, uh, and where did you study? Graduate work for the statistics at the Students of College in Chennai. I used that. And then I went to Calcutta to study statistics. Roughly two to three years, finished my doctoral work. And then in 1962, what about statistics and probability theory inspired you uh, to do it over the rest of math? Well, actually, as a graduate, as an undergraduate, I studied statistics, probability, and analysis. It turned out that I was good in probability. Is there any way you can define your research to a layman or someone who doesn't know that much about math in general? How would you define your research to them? Well, first you have to explain to them what probability means. Uncertainty is a You can quantify uncertainty. Twice, then there's two different percent chance of giving two heads. That makes them think a little bit, and maybe they can understand that. And you go on step by step until they understand and search into the thing. Who was your inspiration to do math in general growing up? Did you aspire, uh, what did you aspire to be in math when uh, you were doing your undergraduate or graduate studies? not clear to me. I mean, as an undergraduate, you're not sure you want to go into research, other opportunities are open for you. But you want to try research because you can always say, if I don't succeed, it takes some time to realize whether you are successful. You won the Abel Prize, which is kind of like the Nobel Prize for Mathematics, right? You know, there is no Nobel Prize in Mathematics for the years. And so the Norwegian government decided to fund it. In 2001, I believe, 
uh, the Norwegian government gave it enough funding uh, in order to proceed. And uh, now the Abel Prize is almost like the Nobel Prize in Math. What was your experience uh, getting such a large prize, uh, getting uh, that much prestige? Uh, how did it feel to you? They're happy. You know, one has to realize also that there are a lot of talented people. It's yourself and your veteran. Who gets awarded the prize? It's a little matter of life. Because anybody who gets a prize really deserves it. But everybody who deserves it cannot get the prize. So you have to be a little modest. I heard something like that from a college, former college admissions officer uh, for Harvard or Yale or something like that. Uh, he said there were so many great applicants, but, uh, but we can't accept them all. Uh, all uh, there were a lot of them that deserve uh, uh, admission, but we cannot accept all of them who deserve it. If you had a friend who, ver who disliked math very much, how would you inspire him? Uh, to like math. How would you explain them why you like math so much? You have to understand why he dislikes math. So he says, well, I didn't do well because I don't like it. But liking mathematics, doing well solving problems are two different things. Mathematics is really like solving puzzles. Mathematics is the kind of puzzle that you want to solve. If they were good at math in school, but they felt like they had to memorize too many equations, or they had to remember too many formulas, what would you say to them about that? It's important to realize that most formulas of mathematics Be able to derive them from it. But that we understand something, and you don't have to. Actually, I uh, took it from my New York University scholarship application. <laughs> I finally wanted to ask you. Uh, what would you say to people who are not sure what they want to do uh, with their math careers? Uh, wh what do you think uh, they should do to find out? Uh, you know, things are changing. Until recently, instead of mathematics degree, the only way you can use it is to teach mathematics to your class. Things have changed. You know, many things are practical. There are many industries that require if you are a trained mathematician, you have a lot of opportunities to apply mathematics. Thank you for all of your time, uh, for taking so much time out of your day so I can interview you. It feels I don't know how to express my uh, myself because this is an opportunity that I will never have again. Yeah, very well.